Hey gang, welcome back to part two of how to write an engineering resume. The first part we told you about kind of a header, objective, and your education. Okay, so we're moving on to the next section in your resume, probably the meat of your resume, the most important part, um, and that is the experience section. Okay, now for, for one thing, now remember I, I told you, um, you can write a heading here and I like a line across the page to delineate this from the other sections, from your education, from your campus involvement, from your honors and awards, and those kind of things. Um, and you can call this several things. You can call it experience, okay? Or um, you can call this relevant experience. No, don't put it, yeah, put it over here, right? Uh, and you should just call it probably experience uh, unless you have something that you want to keep that you want to be at the very top of your resume or you have one internship that was engineering focus and then you have a bunch of work experience that maybe wasn't engineering focus then you could have a section called relevant experience and put that at the top so your experience is kind of the meat of your resume so and let's talk about like the formatting okay so here, let's say here's your page, right? The same thing goes over here as it did up here in education, and that is we have a column over here with dates in them, okay? And so all the way down your resume, you're gonna have dates for everything. So whatever your experience is, let's say that your experience is, um, I, I don't know, NASA, right? Okay, and then this would be bold, Okay, and then the next would be location. We're gonna do it just like we did last time. So let's say, I'm, I'm gonna write this in italics. I, don't, I can't write in italics. Okay, this is italics. So it matches what we had in our education. And then after that, you get one more thing and that is your title. Okay, now don't make up titles, okay? Put titles that were, you know, if you were an intern, Put intern. Um, if you were a, um, I don't know, if you were a, a clerk, put put clerk there, right? The funniest one I saw was somebody had um, telecommunications engineer, and their place they worked was at Papa John's Pizza. So they really just answered the phone. So, you know, if a, if a recruiter reads something silly on there that you're making up to try and make yourself sound better, um, that's not going to reflect well on you, okay? And then the dates. Let's say this was um, um, July, or, or let's say this was June uh, 20 to um, September 20, right? So that tells me, or you, you could put, I'm okay with summer um, 2020. Either way is acceptable for you to put for the date. So you can put your actual date range or you can just put the whole summer, that's fine as well. Now, under this experience, here's what you need to do, okay? You need to have three bullet points, okay? And you get, and you really don't want a whole lot more than three things for this experience. What are the three main things that you did? And what you want to focus on are things that they gave you that you were, your responsibility and then and your leadership, okay? So how did you have leadership? Did you, um, so things that you can talk about for leadership, okay, leadership would be like, um, and this doesn't necessarily go for NASA, of course, this goes for any job. What would you put for leadership? Well, okay, scheduling. Okay, I was in charge of scheduling for other people. Um, training. I, I trained new workers to do whatever job there is. Um, or managed, you know, either you managed a project or you managed other people, whatever. And responsibility, some things that you can put on there would be something like, and, and, and this is just, this, and I'm talking here primarily about non-engineering jobs, okay? And that would be something like a opened or closed, right? So it, if you, Started the shift or ended the shift, that means that you were in charge of the money, right? Getting everything set up and then closing 
would be uh, making the deposits, making the bank, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it shows your responsibility with the money, that, that you were trusted with the money. Um, inventory. Okay. Did you keep track of inventory? Did you tell them how much was on in stock? Uh, that shows a great level of responsibility that you're in charge of uh, ordering what we're going to need for next week or whatever, right? So inventory control, that kind of thing. Um, a cashier. Obviously a cashier. You're, again, you're trusted with money. And the other thing is, is customer service. Okay? Customer service. You're in charge of dealing with people. And really what you are is you're a problem solver. You're resolving your uh, conflict with people. You're um, dealing with returns or whatever, right? So all of those things can look great in a resume. They may not have anything to do with an engineering job, but you need to have three bullet points under each job that address your responsibility and your leadership role in that job. Now let's talk about engineering um, jobs that you may have had. These are the ones that you really want to showcase. Um, and also, as far as their bullet points, when you write these out, make sure that they go all the way over here and fill up this space. The, these bullet points are not three word things, okay? So they're a, an abbreviated sentence, but you're trying to take up that space again so you don't have a bunch of white space on your resume. It is full. It's not too much, but it's full. So for your engineering internships and, and jobs and things that you've had, you want to be sure and showcase um, things that, that engineering people that are hiring engineers would be looking for, okay? So I want you to be thinking about buzzwords. I want you to be thinking this. What if, what if these recruiters took your resume back to their place of business and they scanned it and they had an OCR scanner, an optical character recognition system? And what it does is it puts all those words in and then they're able to go in their computer and they're top, able to type in a certain word, CNC programming, right? And everybody that has a, a, a resume with CNC programming, bloop, that pops up, okay? So what you want to do is be sure you get the buzzwords that people are looking for in jobs. That's why it's all it's very important to go and see exactly what people are looking for and put the, those kind of things in your, in your um, resume, right? So uh, for your engineering job, let's say that that was at, um, I don't know, Boeing, okay? I am keep going back to aerospace here, right? So here's my three bullet points under Boeing. Okay, I, I had CNC programming, right, uh, for uh, FAA parts for whatever customer, whatever, right? I had um, um, finite, finite element analysis of designs, whatever, right? And then I want to be sure and put FEA because some people would search for FEA. I have it spelled out and I have the uh, acronym. So both, both things, if somebody's looking for a certain thing, it's in there, right? CNC programming. I don't have to put computer numerical control. We know what that is, right? Or, you know, um, mill and lathe work or PI and P, uh, PI and D um, uh, design or, or some kind of uh, well, anything that people would be looking for. You want to specifically address that in these three bullet points under each one of your experiences, okay? So how do you phrase these sentences under these bullet points under here? You start with verbs, not only verbs, but strong verbs, okay? You want, and, and the big no-no is don't start with responsible, responsible for dot, 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 right? Just because you were responsible for it didn't mean that you did it, right? So like designed and built, blah, 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 right? And the reason for that is, is you want the most important word like design and built next to this, this bullet point over here so that it's on that left side of your page. Because the recruiter, what they've done on studies is they go and look at this, the recruiter looks at your heading, and then they look down the left side of the page over here. They look at all, they look at where you worked. You know, boom, boom, boom. They looked at what you did. They look at what university you went. They're on that left side. So anything you can get 
right over here on this side, that strong verb that's going to tell you like, like things they're looking for, like design and built. I like that, right? Um, you want that to be first over here, okay? So these are the things that you want to tell. And, and sometimes I see students putting way too much detail here. Don't, you don't have to put everything on your resume. What you want to do is give them enough information so that they can understand what they're talking about. Also, be careful about lingo, right? If you worked in a certain industry and they had a lingo for that industry that only, if you only worked in that industry, you would understand, make sure that you understand who your audience is. They may not, because let's say you're, the HR manager is going to get your resume. The HR manager may not know what finite element analysis is, right? So you may have to describe that a little bit to what, what's going on there. So you need to make sure that you understand who your audience is uh, and spell that out. But you want to put just enough on there to tell what you did, but not over tell what you did. I want to be able to go into an interview with you now, and I want to say, hey, tell me more about this, right? And then we can have a conversation in depth about exactly what all went into that, right? So you just want to put on here just enough to kind of to, to tell what you did and get them interested in it. And then all the rest of those details, let's save that for the interview. So let's talk about chronology real quick. What you typically want to do is you want to have the most recent job at the top and then on down from there. So as you go down, the, the jobs are getting older. How far back should you go? Well, you want to have two or three different jobs on here. You don't want to have seven, you know, you don't want to have, I, I was a lifeguard in, 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 you know, grade school and then in high school I worked at, you know, the supermarket stocking shelves and then some of that stuff you can drop off. Now for some of you that's all you have and if that's all you have then that's what you got to use. But hopefully you are, um, you have enough stuff on your resume where you can fill it up with relevant jobs, okay? so. What you're trying to show over here is a continuous work history. What you don't want to have over here in these dates is a big gap, like there's two years missing, because they're going to say, hey, what happened? For well, I went to jail for two years. No, you don't want to tell them that. So before I talk about your school project, let's also remember that you want your best job at the top. So let's say last summer you had a great internship at uh, an oil field company or whatever, right? And then this summer, the pandemic hit, and I couldn't find a job anywhere, and the only thing I could do was delivering pizzas, right? Well, do you want delivering pizzas as your most current job? No, you don't, okay? So what, you know, I told you to put them in order, but, that, but that's in order. Okay, what, what you want to do in that case is have two sections. You can have relevant work experience, and boom, move that engineering experience where that's at the top. You want your best stuff at the top. And then under that, maybe you have other experience, and then you can put your pizza job and whatever else down there. But it's important to have, because again, they're reading it from the top to the bottom, and if they don't have time to get to the bottom, make sure your good stuff is at the top. So let's talk about your university projects and what those look like. Okay, let's talk about what happens if I don't have work experience, I just have maybe an undergrad research experience, or maybe just, can I, can I use a project from university as one of my uh, work experiences? Let's talk about that. So for a university project, let's say you don't have any work experience, you just never could find a job, whatever happened, I don't know what happened, you went to summer school every summer, but you do have some really cool project that you worked on at university. Okay, so here you go. So here you would have my university, Okay, whatever that is, that's an R. Um, again, the location, um, Kansas City. Okay, Mo. Uh, and then you can put, you can either put undergraduate researcher or you can just put researcher, that's fine, as your job title, right? And then under there, here's our three bullet points. So just like our work experience, we're going to put these three things that we did in our, in our project, okay? Again, design and build, right? Blah, blah, blah. So tell me about what it is you designed and built. Um, um, completed 
FEA and risk analysis on blah, 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 right? Okay. And then for your last bullet point, maybe something like developed uh, instructions. That's a U for blah, 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 blah. This one has to do with maybe writing because that's a very important thing for engineers is how are your writing skills? Well, in include that in your, um, in your description of that job. So that's a totally okay thing to do on the project, right? Another thing that you could put in here is that's really good is something on teamwork, okay? Worked on a team to complete blah, blah, blah. We really like to see teamwork stuff. The, the uh, recruiters are really loving teamwork stuff. And then of course, the exact same thing, this is for a project. Maybe this is your senior design project. Totally okay to have in there. There's a lot of great senior design projects. Or you could do the exact same format with maybe an undergrad re research project you're working in, on in a lab, okay? So there's all kinds of things you can include in your experience that aren't, you know, working at a job making money. So make sure that um, you set this up and it's well formatted, okay? So I'm gonna show you again a little cutaway here of an example of what that experience section might look like. Now, when you look at this here that I have on the screen for you, you gotta understand that you're gonna put your own things in there. Don't copy down what I have on this one, but you need to put your own things that are relevant to the job that you are looking for. So for the experience section on your, on your resume, really, if you if you've got a if you had good experience, you should have no problem coming up with three bullet points. If you have something that you can only come up with one bullet point on, maybe that's something we should just leave off. Okay, so and, and you don't have to try and cram every job that you've ever had on here. You just need your most relevant from the last four or five years. That's all you need on here. Okay, the this section of your resume should take up probably about. I'd say a, a third to a half of your page, right? So this is a good portion of your resume. This is the meat here. So if you have giant education and no experience and giant, you know, whatever at the bottom, that's not gonna look good. So this is really what we wanna highlight. So these are the things that you need to be working on. If you don't have the stuff to go in here, you need to be thinking about how I get some stuff to go in here. So that concludes our discussion on the experience section of your resume. When we come back next time, we'll talk about the next section and uh, maybe wrap this up. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helps. And I'll see you on the next video.